Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, the Lone Wolf, checking in once again for another episode of Sake Sundays. Brought to you by our wonderful sponsors, Drink Sake Hot. You know, you can find them on IG at Drink Sake Hot. You can order it to your front door at sakehigh.com. They're selling nationwide. So you can have a little bit of Kyoto, Japan, anywhere in America. And we also want to say a special shout out and a thank you to God's Favorite Jewels for sponsoring the episode as well. Uh, I got my mahogany beads on right now. And my amethyst, Ooh. no, rose quartz and clear quartz today. And then amethyst is what we have for our, our guests. No way. Yeah. Amethyst bracelet Oh for my you. goodness. I'm going to put this on right now. Oh, this is it. so cute. And also, thank you. It's a crystal. One of my favorites. Uh, really? It's my birthstone, actually. Oh, you're lucky. Mine's a garnet. I mean, those are good. Purple's better. Okay. You, you want to put it like that? No. <laughs> Can you do this for me? <laughs> uh, right hand. It's the right hand. That is so pretty. Thank you. So God's jewels. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about it. I'm curious. Now I'm really curious because it's crystals. Well, yeah. God's favorite jewels is the name of it because I believe we're all God's favorite. And then I was talking to uh, someone, Jade Vanessa, on the show, and I just had the idea. It's like, we're all also jewels, you feel me? And so we're all God's favorite wow. jewels. And that's just giving like, this. Sometimes people need a reminder, and it's cool to have an actual physical reminder, reminder that yeah. you can look at and feel. So. Wow. Thank you so much. Bless. Of course. Cool. Well, show all your friends. Tell them about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to be representing for sure. I love the motto. But then also tell the people who you are. Let oh. them know who we've got with us today. <laughs> Yes, my name's Olivia Wraith. I'm an alternative pop producer and artist. Thank you, Chuck, for having me tonight. It's been a long time waiting for me. And I'm like really excited to be here. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what we have to discuss. I'm excited to try this. No, right. I'm glad you came through. <laughs> and before we take the shot, I just want to say, I remember I just saw your performance twice now. And you remember the picture I posted. Just from that, it's like the energy you brought to the performance, like the amount of care. I won't even say energy because you could bring any type of energy, the amount of care and attention that you have to the music. I appreciate that. So that's why I wanted to get Thank you in you. here. I'm getting goosebumps again. <laughs> he's too real. Like he's too I keep real. It on him <laughs> okay. So one thing I have been on my sobriety journey, mm -hmm. but not to say I'm not going to try this because I've been eager to try it. Um, I'm just, you know, on my sober journey to not be wasted no, and gone sure. away. We can talk about it if you want. But um, because that being said, I haven't had alcohol in quite a while. So this is going to be a true taste test for me. Let's see. Hopefully Cheers. you like it. What? Super smooth, right? I'm gonna say it again. I haven't had alcohol in quite a while, and that was so smooth. That's I was impression. expecting like a some type of face. That's amazing. Wow. It's like ten, perfect. ten. Mm -hmm. And then before we get into everything, let me go ahead and like this. Much necessary. Yes. It's real quick. Get the mood right. <laughs> no negativity. Right. That's one of my favorite smells, too. Aromatherapy. <laughs> oh, that's enough. Just a, a quick burn at it. Put itself out. And then you said you wanted some tea? Yes. That is so cool. Oh, you like the little Buddha? I need that. <laughs> like, I really need that, though. I'll let you know when you can get one. You like to shop in Santa Monica. Wow. I'm stunned. Oh. I really actually need that, though. I'll let you see it for the one time. <laughs> yeah so on your sobriety journey mm -hmm. what have you been replacing the liquor with oh booked and busy um i want to say i tried to substitute with like wine instead of hard alcohol or like beer instead of wine didn't work so i finally just put it down and I did switch over to drinking a lot more tea in my day. 
Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna lie. That's why I asked because we were drinking tea and it's not alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it went from like coffee all day to like tea all day, which is so much better. And I actually love how many different teas there are. There's so many, endless amount. And, um, that's pretty much it. Like just going from like a clouded mind to a clear mind has done so much for me. That's why I call it like my sobriety journey because it's not necessarily like, Oh, I'm never going to drink again in my life, but it's like drink with purpose. Right. As opposed to just drinking to get drunk, you know, or like meeting it as a necessity to have fun when it should never be that. And like being able to execute your goals it's like so much harder when you're drinking every single day. So that's definitely like the tea has been the number one substitute, but I want to say more than that, even though it's not a material item, it's just staying busy. Yeah. It keeps your mind off of, you know, not doing it. Or mm-hmm. sometimes I feel like when you say you're not going to do something and you think about not doing it is when you're like, bro, but when you don't have the space and time, that part, you don't even realize that you're, I don't have time. Missing out on it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I only say missing out on it, but not actually giving into the temptation because mm-hmm. you're not feeling the temptation because your mind mm-hmm. is elsewhere. Absolutely. As soon as I got busy, the temptations got a lot. Like it was minuscule compared to when I had idle hands. So I was lit. You just read my mind. I was about to say. I guess to say that idle hands are the devil's playground. Yes, it rings true. Like, yes, that's crazy. One hundred percent. Yes, it's not crazy. We, we just, we just started but we already locked in (laughs) already locked in but uh if you don't mind sharing what like prompted you to say that you needed to you know take a little pause sure i don't mind at all i think it's um one of the most important parts of that journey is being real with yourself and being honest and being able to take accountability um what prompted me was i Like, I've always struggled, like, in and out with these phases. Whatever's going on in my life, drink. And not too long ago, I was like, this is slowing me down. Like, I have so many ideas and so so much creative energy. I want to tap into that. And um, I'm not going to say names, but I've got some tea. (laughs) Tea for the tea was good. (laughs) So I have been involved with someone. Actually, I want to call it a group of people. Yeah. Usually, you feel me? Birds of the More same feather hair. flock yeah. together type right. vibe. Um, lots of alcohol every single night, um, substance abuse, and just you could tell, like, the trajectory. Just, part of that. Yeah, like, and it just felt, it just didn't feel like me. And I noticed, like, a sharp decline. And right before I decided, like, oh, I know exactly what I, what I want to do for the months to come. Like, it's time for me to, like, show the world what I do and who I am. Yeah. And then somehow, I think it was a test from a higher power, the universe, put me in this place and it was just so sloppy and so messy and I woke up and I felt crappy. Um, Another thing that prompted me was when I would do shows during this time period when I was involved with that group of people, the first thing we would do after sound check is pregame, but I'm not talking like a normal pregame. I'm talking like drinking out of the bottle, sharing bottles, like nasty nasty like i i can't i look back and i'm like i do take accountability for it i chose no 100%. i chose to join that i chose to be like oh give me another shot or whatever yeah. and then by the time i would get to the venue i didn't even realize that it my performance could have been so much better and then so i slowly gravitated towards like it took a lot of nerve for me to not drink before my shows i yeah. think The last time I had uh, set myself a rule for drinking before a show was the night um, I met you. It was right before Halloween, and I performed with a live guitarist. He was drinking. Everyone was, of course. I had two drinks, and that was my cutoff. Yeah. That rule didn't work. I mean, I had an amazing performance, um, one of my best recaps ever on Instagram. But after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this with zero alcohol. That performance was nerve wracking. Um, I also brought out my keyboard for the first time and I played keys live for the first time sober. My Somebody said in the crowd, um, I could see your hand shaking. I thought you were just nervous. I was so nervous because I was 100% like there yeah. Yeah. and I was feeling everything. I was feeling everyone's energy and it was crowded. Like I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. And it's like, 
then after that, it got easier to perform sober. And since like I've been able to remember conversations after I get off stage, yeah. make connections and not just be like, hi, I'm having this conversation and never talking about yeah. it again, you know, and like I'm still getting goosebumps from talking about this. But yeah, um, just I didn't like where I was and I know exactly what I want to do. And my vision is so much clearer that I've just chosen to stick to this journey, you know, not just sure. keeping it cool. You know? Yeah. Well, there's two things I want to touch on that you said. The first is universal. You mm -hmm. said honest and accountable, which is something I feel like is so hard for all of us to do and be sometimes. Yeah. And I'm going to say sometimes because I feel like we choose most of the time to not see. There are situations where we're not at that level of understanding, but when it comes to like knowing whether or not you feel right in a situation, you might not know what you should do. But right. if you tap into your actual self, you know whether it's not what you want to choose. And like you said, you looked around and was like, this is dirty, bro. Like, Facts. And you said birds <laughs> of a feather flock together. Bro, I'm dirty, bro. Like, once yeah. you realize that you're also dirty, is now your choice to stay dirty because it's what you are mm -hmm. or to figure out how to get clean because it's what you know you want to be. Right. And then the second thing is, I could relate to a lot of what you said because like, I used to black out lit. Yeah. Like, big lit. Homies called me. Oh, drunk Chuck was out that night. Oh, I'm like, man. no, not drunk Chuck. What I do, you feel me? Yeah. And it was the status quo. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily because I thought it was what I should be doing, but birds of a feather flock together. We wanted to have fun and this is how we're having fun. And then it just became three years yeah. of the same type of fun. Mm -hmm. And I looked around and said the same thing. This isn't me like i'm super far removed from being where i would have been and i was just like on a random friday night if i would have picked something to do i would have been at the bar bro like i would not have been there that night there yeah. was three other things i could have went to and i chose to get lit because mm -hmm. that's what the boys wanted to do mm -hmm. nothing against the boys i love the boys yeah we love them anyway but, but there's so many other things that i wanted to do in this time and yeah, I've worked at them. I have a couple songs, but like, I got real honest. And yeah. so I did the same thing as you. I'm wow. going to quit drinking hard liquor. <laughs> and then I woke up off a of sangria drunk. High five. So hungover. I'm proud of you. So hungover. I, I can't even drink sangria the way I like wine anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, even if I'm not drunk, there's the taste. After one glass of sangria, it was like, I'm cool, bro. Yeah. Because I drank so much just one night when I was like, I'm not going to drink. Yeah. I'll drink wine. Mm -hmm. Big old Rossi. Boy, kill myself. Yeah. And so it is a journey and it takes a lot of self like reflection and just being honest with yourself. Because like you said, you don't want to name names. You don't want to put it on one person. I'm going to take accountability for where I put myself. Mm -hmm. I chose to do this because I was having fun. But in the midst of having fun, I forgot so many other things. And yeah. I'm starting to remember like, damn, these are cleared up. Right. Like, yeah. So. Wow, I thought you were going to think I was, like, I didn't want to come off, like, pompous or crazy. No. Like, I'm so happy you could resonate with that. Because no. it's not really talked about a whole lot in my industry and your industry, the yeah. music industry. Is, it has a whole stereotype about that. So well, even just resonate. around people, I feel like. Because, like, like I said, I was with a group. Yeah. And I wasn't with four people, five people, like, mm -hmm. I was with a group. Rolling deep. <laughs> and not one person ever bothered to ask me what prompted the change and that's how i knew i made the right decision mm -hmm. you feel me absolutely and so i was like all right bet if one out of 50 people actually even cared enough to say what's up and why why was i even that's yeah. a big question reflection on me on why was i even there that makes my heart beat because i just went through that mm -hmm. so and that's where the honest and uh honest and what you said accountability, accountability. take accountability for it all okay. Look, shouts to growth absolutely <laughs> <laughs> this is i can't believe how smooth this is this is so smooth not super good so let's talk about music now mm -hmm. when did you start your well, musical journey i'll try to sum it up so one of my oldest memories back um, it was sometime before I could walk. Don't ask me how I remember this. So it was like one of the only childhood memories I have that's not trauma. Um, I remember sitting down and my dad just sat down 
a one octave pink toy piano and I touched it and I was just like <gasps> I just remember the feeling and so that time fast forward I'm in grade school I am in a Catholic private school that my grandmother sent me to hated school <laughs> loved music class loved recorder the little flute thing they make you oh, with yeah, 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 yeah. I was like I'm, I'm messing with this I really like this and then um I joined choir um and then me and the choir teacher we became really close I don't remember how we just had a thing and she let me uh play the piano in the church after school so yeah. they would lock up the piano but she would go in there unlock the piano and let me play and so my grandma picked me up and um then she used to tell me things like you need to learn how to sing because you're a good singer but you need to learn more and just never stop this she would just keep it so simple and short keep going keep playing go ahead play and she would walk away just let me do my thing with the piano and then um she talked to like the piano player for sunday mass and she was like hey um i'm, I'm just gonna say my stage name olivia is gonna play um the piano for church on sunday i've taught her the hymns and I just lit up. I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is huge. There's, like, hundreds of people in the church, and I was just playing piano. And so that's that. Then fast forward to high school. Um, oh, fun fact really fast. When I was in eighth grade and I graduated there, she never told me. She finally told me. Um, she is Flea's mother. Flea is the basis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So the whole time I was getting mentored from... The, a member of the Red Hot Chili Peppers mother, and I had no idea. Um, yeah, and then so fast forward to high school, got myself a little keyboard, didn't have a laptop, didn't have a cell phone, none of that, just a keyboard. Um, and then I used to, in English class, like for poetry and stuff, I used to just write lyrics to like the songs I would write at home on my keyboard. I'm like, I'm getting A pluses in English from my lyrics. So I was like, this is sick. So I kept running with it. And then um, I didn't have a laptop for a really long time. My grandma had like one of those like big square computers with like dial up internet. I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it's kind of like voice memo on iPhone on this big square oh, computer. Oh, it's probably just called like memos or voice notes. Yes. So I used to record on that. Um, and then I would upload the little, uh, audio files to my MySpace. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. man, I was lit. I was uh, lit back. <laughs> memories. Look, this is my first yes. was, again, like you said, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't super big, you feel me? But it wasn't my MacBook. Right, know? right. It had a tower and a screen and the screen had a little hump on it. Like, exactly. But it was a monitor and tower receptor. We was mm -hmm. at least there, but it was still the MySpace days. Totally. And my microphone was built like a little oval stand. You had a microphone? With a little, just like, it was just a tube. Oh, just wow. a little tube hanging out the top of it that you could adjust like this. Kind of like a vocoder. But with that, was, wow, that's crazy. And then it was, I don't, it was like a, uh, I guess it was supposed to be for video streaming, because what you been calling it? What was the first? Uh, Counter-Strike? No. Not the video game. The first, like, Zoom? Um, Zoom? I couldn't video? tell you. I don't know. I All I know, it was a $5, $10 microphone. Right. It was nothing to record on, and mm -hmm. I was in the same thing. It was the Windows that. recorder. That's what I was in. We yeah. love that, yeah. And so, no, this is the perfect then, place to start. Um, in 2016, um, I was dating someone in the tech field and he saw that I made music and he bought me, um, no, he gifted me like an old MacBook yeah. and, um, a machine beat player. For real? It was like, yeah, That's he was love. like, it was real love. Like the relationship, no, but his, he knew my passion for <laughs> The music. gift was love. The gift was love. <laughs> he knew what he had. He was like, oh, I have an artist in my hands. Here you go. From there, it's history. Once I got Logic. I got Logic gifted to me, too, by someone, like, higher up in the music industry. And basically, like, all these things were just, like, blessings to me, just given to me. Like, here, you need to do this. And then the rest is history. I saw, I taught myself how to produce and everything. Still never took one class except for YouTube Academy. You how know? long did it take you? I'm still learning. Well, um, you feel comfortable and have a, feel comfortable. a mix that you were able to show somebody mm -hmm. and know it wasn't ass. 
Ooh, that's actually, I want to say pretty new because mixing, yeah, um, I want to say like two or three years it's been. But do you produce and let somebody else mix it? Typically, yes. What I'll do is I'll produce it. I'll mix it so I have like oh, an I idea of what I want. So they can know what to do with it. Send them the wet uh, MP3 with all the stuff, Everything all the mixing it. on it. Yeah, and yeah. then I'll send them the dry stems with no effects. So at least yeah. they have an idea. But yeah, I would usually send it for mix and mastering to somebody else. Just for the sole purpose of having like another pair of ears no, besides sorry. just mine. Well, how long did it take you just to get to the point where you liked what you were making enough to share? Ooh, that's like really recent. I want to say like for real? since twenty sixteen. Like, yeah, um, you I get have in the cave with it. Yeah, I've been in like, the cave. So I was like, let me find my sound. Yeah. You know, it took me a long time. Um, I used to do like a lot of R and B. I tried rap. For real, I need to hear that. I need to hear a rap track. Not on camera, but uh, like I'll, I'll get you in there on the future. <laughs> no, okay, I'll get you on the future. okay, but like, but I need bars. But, like, I need a different artist name. <laughs> It's like nobody can ever look me up and find this and compare it to what I actually yeah. have. <laughs> but I'm down still, just for fun, you know? But, um, yeah, I want to say in, like, the last year and a half, right. I recently just decided I wanted to change my sound, and I found it, and here we are today. No, I'm glad it's worked out. Yeah. It's actually really, I guess, with the amount of time you spent just, like, honing your creativity as an artist, it's not a big like wow to switch your sound but like i feel like sometimes people just fall into a pocket or into what other people suggest they should do mm -hmm. or they get comfortable with what they sound like and they don't really even it's know scary. what their sound is until yeah. somebody tells them and even for myself personally i'd be like bro i don't i really couldn't tell you alternative hip-hop bro like yeah it's so, like alternative hip -hop. but once you do get that honed in and you can say no i'm not doing that mm -hmm. or no i'm not doing that mm -hmm. it just gives you i want to say freedom because you're not trying yeah. to overextend yourself Facts. so you have enough energy for what it is you do want to do mm -hmm. and what it is you do want to do comes out better mm -hmm. because that's what you're focusing on making as opposed to yeah what sounds good or Facts. what they like or what i think i should make or what i'm used to mm -hmm. or this was easy yeah like so definitely I commend you on that thank you yeah and it's still like it's still gonna be a journey i mean i have so much to learn still and like i don't like to put my genre in one box um it's more of like a blend of genres i want to say from like everything i've grabbed all these years trying to like not perfect but like find it's really like who i am right like yeah Perfect example, um, I was working with a really good producer. I actually have so much good music already released that he produced for me. And a co he had a suggestion. He was like, you know what? There's no female uh, Ken Carson. Or like, there's no female Yeet. And he was like, you would kill it. I was like... Okay, I guess, like, yeah, no, like, it's really funny. I mean, like, not it's, wrong. It's just, it's, he's not wrong. He's not wrong, but at the same token, I was like, okay, like, I can produce, like, I'll try this. I yeah. tried it. I have, like, one song out that's, like, kind of like a heat beat, and it's just, I didn't feel it inside of me. And yeah. I feel like my music, um, what I really want to stick out the most when you hear it is, like, it's not just for you to listen to, it's for you to feel something, you know? Yeah. And I feel like I can't. I just don't scratch in that box, you know? So no, yeah. that's another thing where it's like, I don't want to be like anyone else because there's only one of me. And as soon as I feel like this song isn't me, drop it. No, yeah. That taunts me a lot. And so having people like tell you like, oh, I can see this or I can, you feel me? It's like, it's cool to have that. And sometimes you do need it. Cause mm -hmm. it's like, I would have never put myself in there. You could see me mm -hmm. being like, I could be Jay-Z, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. cool, you see me in that light, cool, let me step into it. Yeah. But sometimes it's like, mm. I don't know. Yeah. And it's hard when you do it well, because yeah. like you said, you, he liked it. Yeah. And so it's like, sometimes you do something well, but that doesn't mean it's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And then if it's not what you want to do, then just because you do it well, oh well. Yeah. Like, as long as I'm independent for it, like I'm going to say like, this isn't me. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to make what feels like in my pocket. 
that I feel in my soul so that I can perform it and like exert that energy on people, oh, yeah. like make them, not make them, but like have them let feel, them. Yeah. let them feel what I was feeling when I wrote it and when yeah. I produced it. So yeah. And that's good for being indie and you feel me still building because it's like, say, great scenario, you get picked up by a label right now for a song that they heard, you feel me? And they said, bet, we need an album like this. And you're like, that's not even a song that I like anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's like to be able to give what you want mm -hmm. and be able to build that backdrop yeah. for your artistry. So by the time you are there, right. it's like, well, I mean, we can do that. But it's like 100,000 people who want this already. Right. What are we really talking about? Yeah. And that just gives you the power to say, I know what mm -hmm. I'm doing and mm -hmm. I'm going to keep stepping in this. And even without having 100,000 people, you still have the power to say, this is me, Facts. this is my artistry, and this is my craft. Yeah. And so the fact that you already have that and you're like... I won't say just starting to put out music, but within the last two years. Yes. Yeah. And to be able to say, no, I'm not doing that. A lot of people, when they start dropping, they, especially, I know for a fact, when I first dropped, everybody loved a song that I literally wrote for somebody else. Like, you yeah. like this type of music? I'll make something like that. Mm -hmm. And everybody loved it. Mm -hmm. And then I kept doing it, kept doing it. And then it got to a point where I didn't know what to talk about. Yeah. I was like, literally... I've stretched my it's life too far, bro. Like, I've already stretched everything I know yeah. to fit into this type. Because, like, I can start just saying stuff. Yeah. But then I'm lying to people. And I can't <laughs> do that, bro. Like, I can't do that. Man, that's good. You're not a facade type you beat. You know what I'm you saying? A lot me? of people, they do that. No. But... Oh, we're just talking about emotions. And so, instead of what is your favorite emotion, what are your favorite three emotions to write from? love anger and strength and what is like strength as an emotion when you walk into the room um you're just very confident sure of yourself you feel like you can strengthen other people yeah. they know your power when yeah. you step into the room whether you're the loudest person or not, I feel when like walking in your confidence. Strength, yeah, walking in your confidence and yeah. yeah. All right, all right, bet. And then what are some songs that have been written from those points that are out? So love. Hmm. I want to say like my biggest one for love would be um, it's called A Loon at Night. Um, even though it's like from a sad emotion it's still love it's still sad. love yeah love like it's sad. this it's yeah it's the darker side of love and then anger i'm working on something right now that will be out <laughs> uh, from that emotion and then um strength i have a song called while i'm still yours and that's um it's been a favorite as far as like what people have had to say about it. And I feel like because it it makes them feel strong too, yeah. you know, male or female, even though it's directed, like there is, I do talk about love in that song, but it's like from a very powerful place. Like the hook is like, love me while I'm still yours. It's literally like the motto of the song. And then the first lyrics are like, fear me. I will turn into your ghost. So love me. While I'm still yours. All right. A lot of strength. <laughs> and what is uh? Strengthness. What is your favorite song? Ooh. All right. So my favorite song. Yeah. What's your favorite song that you have? Um, it doesn't even have a name yet, and. Okay, let me just start with this. Every time I make a new song, I'm like, this is my favorite song. <laughs> until like you make your next favorite i yeah exactly and it goes and i hear it so many times i'm like oh, i like that song it's okay but then i'll make something new but no this one um i'm actually retracking the vocals explain uh, what that is for people who don't know what's retracting vocals okay so retracting vocals meaning like when i recorded this song and i recorded myself on my microphone at home we could use that yeah. Um, but the quality of my microphone, I have an Aston Origin, which is like 
a medium grade microphone like it's fine i have a lot of music with just my vocals recorded on that but retracking mean meaning that i have access to the same microphone that lana del rey uses or like a much better quality microphone um i would then take that and completely re-record all of the vocals again through a better quality microphone and a better quality interface, like all the studio equipment, instead of like my basic bedroom setup. <laughs> so essentially, when you track a song is when you record it. She recorded it once. Mm -hmm. Now she has better gear. And sometimes you'll retrack it because you messed up or the files got distorted or you learned something new. You wrote yes. a better verse. You changed something. You shortened something. And so you're redoing it. And tracking it is the recording process, so she's retracking the song, meaning she's re-recording it because she's about to kill it even more. Yes, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, and yeah, I just think like this song is so simple. There's like three sounds on it. No auto tune. You say and three sounds. What do you mean three sounds? Oh, my the, 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 the instrumentation. The instrumentation. I was like three sounds. You mean three, three sounds ways. like? Like layers of sound, because usually yeah. you have like a full, there's like layers and layers yeah. and you layers of sound. Man, you feel me? Everything. Yeah. But this, there's. Uh, anyway, bass, guitar, lead, melody. There's not even a beat. You feel me? Bad. And it's so beautiful. And then we put, um, I was actually watching right now one of my lives. We put real rainfall in the background That's of the song. Cool. We started it really quietly yeah. and then towards the end of it Did it turns into it? a storm no it was a plug-in that's fine that's fine but we could do that too say, this is something real dope when you actually record something and add I've it tried to it. it it's like ah! it's rain is really really hard but i do want to master that i want to go outside one time and sample the real rain that'd be so cool no yeah but it does sound very real anyways and yeah that's my new favorite i mean it's song. real rain it's just you feel me? It's yeah. still probably real rain. They no, it feels like outside it. And did it, so. Wait till it's out. I'm going to show you. It's like my favorite. I think it's like top three favorite songs I've ever written. Lyrically but, and musically. Yeah, I'm ready for it to drop now. I'm going to yeah. have to listen to it. Pick it up next. <laughs> so do you consider yourself a lyricist? Yes. Um, just based off of like what I told you earlier when I would pass my English classes <laughs> in high school with my lyrics and yeah. then um, I went to college for English Okay. and I just love to write. I used to write stories and stuff like that and um, implementing that into my music has, I feel like, oh, this is why I like words. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love writing lyrics. Like I have so many lyrics I've never even used before, but I'll never throw them away. I'll keep them always. Do you still look back at them? Oh, yeah. Like, Sometimes I, I, I laugh. That part, that part, <laughs> a, a, that part. That's mainly what I do when I look at like my real old. You feel me? It's like, yeah. I think I might have one since eighth grade, like seventh, wow. eighth grade. It's wow. not here. It's not on me. But, but still, it's somewhere. That's yeah. Amazing. When I was in college, I would come home and I'd be like, "Let me see what I was talking about." Right. And I would just be like, "Bro." What were you talking about? <laughs> How many songs do you think you've written in this like journey? <laughs> Are we like going back to like Yeah, since you started writing like I would say since in you started life. writing. Not since you started writing. If I say how many times did I start writing a song? No, I would say like when you wrote a significant chunk, like a hook. Like when I recorded verse, something? Like, no. Okay. No. How many times have you written at least eight bars that you could say if you <sighs> felt like it, you could record it and not be pissed? Almost. I want to say, like, it's so crazy because I was not expecting this question. So I'm like, no, numbers are just like, I, can't, I lost thousand. track. But yeah. it's like, I want to say like at least a couple hundred because yeah. like there was a time where I didn't have a laptop or Logic Pro, so but I just did voice memo yeah. and I uploaded it on the computer from that way, like yeah. however I could. And man, at least at least a couple hundred. No, I I know, <laughs> I know, I believe you one hundred percent, and it's probably more than that. It's probably like, once you actually, like you said, find a notebook and you flip through it. One five star notebook and like twelve hundred pages in it. 
facts. One subject that that is at least 400 pages. Mm -hmm. So even if only half of that got written and that's 200 pages with writing. So yeah. even if a quarter of that was songs, that's 25 songs and I wasn't even 20 yet. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like when you really stop to think about it, you probably are hundreds. Yeah, hundreds. Like, what, it feels so weird to like answer that, but it's like true. Like it. Yeah, Because you don't like them. <laughs> Exactly. Like, no, bro, don't no, even think facts. about those. Yeah, like, people you know, don't know. Like, them in the corner. When you're an artist, your vault <laughs> is like the size of a bank safe, but it's oh, all man. audio files and like pieces of paper bro. that are crumpled up and have stains no, on like them. Eminem's <laughs> writing on napkins. Like. Right. I've written on a napkin. I'm not I've written lie. on one too. I've written on my hands. Yes. Obviously, my iPhone notes. What's the craziest thing you think you wrote on and then kept? Hmm. I feel like I have to say my hand because that's I'm going to keep my hand. <laughs> but wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Um, honestly, I've kept it really basic. I just, I have journals and journals and journals, but I just mostly write on paper. So yeah, I have to say the craziest thing was probably my hand. There's only been like a time or two where I had to write on like a little piece of paper because I was out and didn't like think to put it on my phone or something no, like that. Yeah. Besides that, like, always, like, notes on my phone for the most part. But, yeah. This hand, because I'm left-handed. This hand right here, we still got it. <laughs> yeah, real quick. One time I wrote on a pizza box. Okay, see, that's real. And then I, I kept see. the shit. I would, too. I would hang it up on a wall. I didn't hang it up, but I, like, had it in my home studio. It was, like, I had a roommate, and he just was, like, we went to throw it away one day. And I'm, like, bro, what you doing in here? Like... First I'm of all, in here, bro. It's fine. <laughs> I appreciate the sentiment. But Don't touch my pizza box. I got it. In a second, he's like, bro, you had this pizza box for like months. Why? And I was like, flip it over. <laughs> Yo. The funniest thing is, I never recorded it. You should have. I never recorded it. See, that's art right there. Like, that's visual I art. I should have kept the box, but it had a grease stain on it. Like That's art. Yeah, I just got to the point. I think it's just when I but, got ready to move out. I looked at it, and I looked at my desk, and I was like, bro, we graduated. Yeah. But for that year, it was like, all right, we're going to record this one day. Okay. I just thought about that question with Eminem writing on napkins. I wonder if he still has any of them. He better. He probably has one or two. So you better have at least one. No, oh, if he does, that boy go for a milli. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine Stan written on a brown paper bag from an alcohol. <laughs> what? Sorry. Somebody well, he should have just Coupled came up. up with that story. Like I wrote this on <laughs> my big on paper bag, holding a, a forty ounce. <laughs> and just sold it. That would have been funny. Yeah, oh. that's great. I think it's shot a clock if you're. Okay. Yes. So just let me know if we get, you know. I like I like the pace we're going. And like I said, like my biggest thing was with purpose. No, for sure. And this is like really amazing. Um I know where I can get this. This is in stores. Yeah. So like I'm going. Um obviously like if I've had like a really long day or something like that. But yeah, I'm game. This is really good. And it's not Hard alcohol doesn't taste like gasoline. Um, it's not going to make that. my lips red from being wine. It's not going to give me uh, like a bloat because it's beer. So it's all natural, gluten free, sulfate free. So it's healthy. I can't go wrong. It's pretty much tea. Like the only difference is it didn't come out of that Buddha because we got our own cans right here. No, they make bottles too. So that's amazing. But no, that's funny. You actually, I already seen it in stores. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, we just had Eminem, you know, he's one of the greats, inspiration of mine. Who are some of your biggest inspirations? You said Lana's okay. name one time. Is that I did. Name? You didn't say it as um, an inspiration, you just said her name. She uses, like, one of the best microphones, and I'm so stoked. What did she use? Uh, the Newman oh. something. All right. Is the it Newman one of the something. old ones, though? Like, not one of the 103s or 102s? I don't know exactly. I just know what it looks like. Okay. Um, I've seen it one time. I've been in its presence, but like um, the end of February, I'm going to a special place where I get to record with that. So that's all I know. Um, be a downstairs when you leave. Yeah. What kind of mic does Lana Del Rey use? Yeah, it, I know it's gold. Right. Um, but There's probably not one like, of the one or two. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot of my, about microphones. Like I use like a three hundred dollar microphone, but it does its work. You no, know, three hundred dollar microphone is not. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. Sorry. It does its diligence. 
The first song that I dropped for distribution was recorded on an Audio Technica, hundred dollar mic, and that song had a record label with the cosign, their branch of Universal, wow. interested in giving me a distribution deal. Mm -hmm. I mixed it myself. It's you the feel best. Me? Seriously, you feel me? Yeah. So it was like. If you take the right steps in getting the sound as clean as possible mm -hmm. and the content is good enough, you don't need a five thousand, yeah. fifty thousand. You can buy a mic for thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, no. Just the mic. Not you can buy a microphone for thirty thousand dollars with no cap, no kids. Mm -hmm. You can also buy a whole home studio setup for a thousand dollars, microphone included. Mm -hmm. yeah. Computer separate. Computer separate. Right. <laughs> that's a stretch you know two thousand yeah but everything else a little bit of sound you know treatment i won't say proofing treatment the yes. mics the cords you could even get a doll a thousand dollars that's true yeah. but to start and to start making something that's worth the time it takes the knowledge more than it takes the million dollar setup yeah it's like Definitely. use the tools that you have. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you recorded that song mm -hmm. and it sounds okay. Oh yeah. But you have access to greater, so I'm mm -hmm. going to use greater now. Exactly. But would you have gotten the access to be in the greater if you didn't already have something to show saying you deserved it? No. Exactly. Absolutely not. Yeah. But I mean, I do love Lana Del Rey. Like, um, she <laughs> we just got so far from. The I <laughs> know, but I'm just saying, like, talking about the microphones, like, um, like I'm not. This is just a fact that I've seen all across the board. Um, her voice is like very airy. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't that have to whiskey. project a lot. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I love her. I actually have one of her songs covered that I did like back in like 2016, like a rendition that doesn't sound the same at all. Um, but like I, I have been inspired by her. I just think it's really cool that like, her that sound it's her voice is so simple and it comes out so crisp so i guess i do have to add in her as an inspiration just for that the mere reason of like her vocal tracking yeah. that's, um, that's a musician's effortless. opinion too you feel me because like yeah yeah that's the sound quality i hear you i got you yeah yeah but my inspirations i grew up listening to nirvana rage against the machine um mazzy star smashing pumpkins like very grungy and then um when i started really like learning how to produce uh when i started learn learning to produce the sound that i wanted right i started becoming more influenced by like pop artists um okay. billy eilish um Ash Nico is really cool, even though she, her cadence is like very rap style. I'm very inspired by like her concepts of music. Um, but yeah, like for the most part, Billie Eilish is like, I really resonate with her style because she can sit in a room and just sing acoustic with a soft voice or she can like belt it out and project. And that's me too, you know, so... Yeah. I'm very influenced by her and inspired by her. The range. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Oh, if you could work with any artist alive, who would it be? This is so hard because I want to say Billie Eilish again. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason you can't. Uh, either her or Doja Cat. Um, Funny story, I met Doja Cat. I was in the studio with her back in like that was fire. back like way before um Bitch I'm a cow. Right. I don't yeah. Before, <laughs> that, before, that, before that. And I can say this because it's facts, like she was really fucked up off yeah. whatever. Yeah. She she hadn't found herself yet and she also went on that journey and got right and like look at her music career now. Yeah. But yeah, like just because I've seen her growth from like when she didn't really know until now she like, you know, who knows if she's making what she really wants to. But I I truly believe she is making the music she wants to. I'd like to think so. Just because yeah. listening to her music lyrically, like I'll say, <clears throat> excuse me, especially before like this year, two years ago. Yeah. It sounded like nothing else I had heard at that point. Like point in time, like that period of time, the stuff that was bubbling the way she was, mm -hmm. she was sounding different. So mm -hmm. I feel like you have to be making what you want to, yeah. because people want you to make what is possible. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So definitely her, Billie Eilish. I can't choose. 
Well, either way, it'd be a fire trap. I'll take both of them. Right. We'll go at both. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. Or if you can perform with any artist not living, or record, record something with it. Um, I know this sounds crazy, but probably Joan Jet. Um, um, that is. I love rock oh, yeah, and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I believe it's like her and like some band members, but she was just so spunky and like her spirit. Um, I feel like I have a lot of it in me. I don't know a lot about her music, but I know that she didn't give a single F. Like she just walked in her power, you know, and like everybody loved that. And I feel like there's not enough of that uh, for for female artists. Yeah. Is that something you feel like you want to leave with people? Is like that feeling of empowerment? Absolutely. I'm trying um, to like really zone in on that and make it heard through my music right now. We're working on that. So yeah, that's definitely like a legacy I want to leave and just like being true to yourself, being honest with yourself, um, being who you are and living in that confidence of... Yeah. Like the fact that you are one of one and you're God's favorite. Right. You know? Right. Same thing. Same right. kind of thing. So we're all God's favorite. Mm-hmm. You feel me? We and all are. I feel like like repeating that to yourself not only allows you to walk in your confidence, but to inspire other people to do it too. Facts. And to remind yourself, like, yo, I gotta respect them as such. Mm-hmm. It's like just because I feel this way about myself doesn't diminish any of their greatness either absolutely we're all on a unique journey like no one is the same and i think that's such a beautiful thing and instead of like viewing other people as like oh like let me compare myself or like let me compete with that like no we're all god's favorite because we're all here existing right right now and there's space for everybody in their place yeah like and this is something i'll just I don't know where this came from, uh, but like frequencies, you feel me? It's like everything okay. emits some type of frequency. Mm-hmm. And it's like, in a song, if you have frequencies that are conflicting, it's not going to sound right. And so okay. if we have people, it's like life, they said, walk to the beat of your own drum. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And this is one thing I like to look at. The word universe literally is a uni one verse, one verse. The world is one verse, and it's a part of a song. We're all playing it. And so if we start trying to play at somebody else's frequency, that part of the song is going to be a little off-kilter and quiet. Yeah. This is so great. But as soon as you give space for what's supposed to be there, Mm -hmm. now the whole song just feels better. Yeah. That cohesion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's, I mean... I love where that came from. That was super, like, yeah, that was meant to be said. <laughs> Absolutely. And, like, talking about frequencies and, like, universe, universal energy, oh, um, yeah. frequencies, like, specifically, um, it's technically, like, a vibration. And we hear frequencies all throughout the day. Like, what, what you just said was, like, absolutely meant to be said because it resonates with me a lot. Like, um, Resonate. Resonance. Mm-hmm. See? Words. It's we everywhere. love it. It it's is everywhere. everywhere. And it's really important for people to, like, sometimes sit and, like... Remember. Re- remember and be aware of that. Like, everything is really a frequency, too. Yeah. And that just means that it's all more connected than we like to believe it is. Yeah. And so, with it being a frequency, the thing about frequencies is you're totally unaware of it until you have the right conductor and can actually, you feel me, channel it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's as easy as removing something. Mm -hmm. It's like if you put something on to a charge, but then you have something else touching it that either counteracts that charge or has a stronger negative, that frequency is not going to pick up. The same as when you had, but they don't remember this. Did you have a TV with antennas? Of course. You feel me? Of course. My mom just switched over like a year ago. That's crazy. Sometimes you do. My aunt, she does still have one. I'm saying that's crazy. And I don't know if she got rid of hers or not. But she She, did. She put it in the garage. She did put it in the corner. And she was like, whatever. I don't feel like watching the DVDs. I'm trying to see. You know what she called it? She called it. uh, Rabbit ears. She called it EP. I forget what she called it, but pretty much she was like, whatever I can get. 
Like she didn't call it television. She said whatever vision or something like whatever that. Whatever vision. I'm like, you're funny. She's like, I don't know what you're going to come in today. <laughs> like sometimes it's six, sometimes it's eight. That's I, beautiful though. It's a frequency. Hey, but no, she's 100%. Connecting. In Regardless. order to get the screen clear, sometimes you have to move the antenna. Mm -hmm. You might have had to move the base from off top of the TV. Like, make space for you feel me? Make space for there to actually be a good connection. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same with us. It's like sometimes we have to remove things mm -hmm. in order to really tap into where it is we want to be in ourselves and it's like that's our frequency sometimes you have to get alone by yourself and figure out where you're resonating at because that resonance changes sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes you're up here and it's a high shrill noise and it's annoying because your thoughts will not shut up yeah and so you gotta ground bring that up down mm -hmm. change the frequency a little bit and yeah. get into your root you feel me and right. center again mm -hmm. And then sometimes you gotta do something in between, but it's a matter of being able to hear it. Because, like we said, resonance, all of our chakras are in a different place and resonate somewhere different. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if there's too much noise around you, you don't even you hear your own sound. Yeah. It's, the resonance is bouncing from here to there because mm -hmm. he's talking, she's talking, that billboard's right. talking. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no, you have to get alone and figure out where it's even coming from. What yeah. is this sound? What is this noise? Because take might, notes. Oh, it might be Do that. You said you wrote that song and it was a love song, but it was sad. It was but sad. It was love. But it was still love. You know I mean? so yeah. Like, Do I know it's love when I'm not listening to my heart about it? I could no. Uh, you feel me? So it's like you have to figure out what it is and it changes. It's yeah. like so yeah, that just came to me. It's beautiful. I love it. Everybody take <laughs> notes because I feel like not enough people are awake like this and it's amazing to like resonates so much with what you're saying and like you understand what i'm saying if you don't know about frequencies maybe he'll talk more about it on sake sundays or you can, oh no you know. we're definitely talking about it more and more episodes soon. exactly exactly Lips, a sound exactly. a frequency no it's crazy and it's like you were saying it's like a lot of people aren't aware of it just because it's something we don't talk about enough um that's what i'm talking about it right now what was your favorite subject in elementary music really I like was not weak. Um, so in grade school, I struggled a lot as a student. I don't want to say I was a bad person. That was incorrect. No, I, I, I didn't figure that's what you meant. No, <laughs> I like you meant I just student. I wasn't able to focus. Um, art and music and computer class. Yeah, dude, my computer teacher in grade school was so awesome. She taught us how to use GarageBand. That's dope. Which GarageBand is the I guess you would call it software before Logic Pro. Yeah. So it was basically teaching you production like, at a young yeah, age. I was going to say it was cutting edge at one point yeah. in time. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, and so, yeah, like, I, it's so funny. I was terrible at science, terrible at geography, like, terrible at math. Um, English, yeah, I liked English, but I hated, like, uh, the weird, like, assignments for, like studying stuff from like so long ago like Shakespeare's so I'm not gonna lie I didn't really get down with that very well I'm not gonna lie Shakespeare in high school couldn't really care less yeah yeah high school see it still went on to high school but you know what I'm saying like the you only really, subject hey, you really had Shakespeare in elementary I forgot I said in elementary you really yeah well because I went to a Catholic yeah. private school so they were like they taught like really like, weird you're things you're going like, to Bible. be seasoned and honestly, oh, Shakespeare wrote part of the Bible, actually. Yeah, so like it was just always having to do with religion. There was literally religion. You were reading class. Shakespeare? You were reading it for religion? It, they would they would make it so that it made sense uh, according Towards to the, the Catholicism. That's very interesting. It was so weird. Um, I knew like I like it was kind of shoved down my throat that religion and like since I've studied so many religions and I'm pretty like open minded to a lot of. Uh, I think there's truth in all of them. But yeah, um, it was, I was not a good student. I was in detention like every other week for like dumb stuff. Like <laughs> you were in the girls' room for too long or like your skirt is too short. No, they were like, strict. Yeah, like we would have to like get on our knees and if our skirt didn't touch the floor, we would have detention. And like, dude, what? Like, I'm going to like wear clothes how I want from day one. So yeah, um, just the arts stuff. It's like the only thing I did good in. Oh, the reason I asked is because, like, what we were talking about with the frequencies and everything, mm. like, literally, a lot of that we're taught as kids in a weird way. 
This is like in third or fourth grade, we start learning about elements. Oh, like atoms? And matter doesn't get destroyed or created. You feel me? It's like, once you think about that, when somebody says, what happens when you die? And you're like, hmm, well, they say that everything in the world is inside of us and we're made up from the same matter as the stars and the stars are supernova balls of energy and they're burning on fire. And we were told energy is never destroyed or created. I don't know what happens when I die, bro, because I was never destroyed or created. And you ask me how old I am, but you just tell me I'm everything in the universe, which means I'm already here and I was always here and I'll never be anywhere else. I'm forever. I'm timeless. They taught us all this yeah. before we was even taught. I think it was like fourth grade or something like that. And so it was like, Crazy. You're you right. stop talking I about it. Exactly. It was when these things came to me when I was like 24, 23 that they started like connecting yeah. to bigger thoughts wow. that I was like, wait, they taught us about the elements then. And yeah. they taught us about the space wow. and about earth being what? You feel <laughs> me? But then once you connect it to bigger things, it's like they tell us these things, yeah. but never give us any reason why. why. And they tell us when we're really young. So by the time we're in high school, like you said, a lot of the curriculum is stuff we don't care about and yeah. it's old. Yeah. So it's like by the time you're old enough to start having not only ideas, but taking action on these ideas and figuring out truths behind them. Mm-hmm. As an eight year old, you can't, you literally cannot get your hands on the tools to start figuring out what they're talking to you about. Yeah, the understanding is just not there. But you can remember it and write it by rote. Yeah. And now you don't need it. Yeah. Why am I going to look back at the information I don't need anymore? Yeah, I got my A plus. You RP. feel me? And so then it's left to the people who want to specialize in these things to study them further and it becomes further removed from everyday population. Yeah. And that's why we say we're all so dumbed down and we're asleep, but everybody wants to talk about the vibe, but nobody right. understands that the vibe is literally the A vibration. vibration. Yeah. <laughs> it's like out of sight, out of mind. Like even, for, I mean, I'm guilty. Like what you just said, we I'm like, are. holy sh. We all are. I don't think about that every, every, every day. But you. Yeah, a lot of days. I'm glad I was here for that. Yeah, no, that's facts though. Tap in. And then the second thing that I was about to ask, let's take a shot before I do it. Yeah. Oh, when you started off earlier, just saying that you uh, went to Catholic school. Mm-hmm. I was curious, just on a little bit on your take about you know, religion, and you said uh, the crystals. Like when I pulled it out, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. crystal. You feel me? A lot of people tie yeah, crystals. crystals into religion or spirituality, and it's all a whole hazy bubble for it's a lot of people right hazy. now. So just whatever you want to say, whatever mm-hmm. your two cents is on it. So Catholicism has like a lot of rules, just like a lot of religions mm-hmm. do. Um, but for me, I kind of took what works for me and what I feel. I kept that Yeah. for the things that I didn't agree with, uh, that were in the Bible. I can't even say anything specific because like, I kind of just generalized it to be like what I believe in. I do believe that there's a higher power. I'll call it God, even though it could be mother universe. It could be your guardian angels. Like when you say that really quick, the mm-hmm. word in the Bible for God is actually a plural being because the Bible is written in Hebrew and the word in Hebrew would be the same as adding an S to it was saying they. You feel me? They like talk the to them. Father, son, and the no, Holy that's the, that's the trilogy, and that's what people will say is the reason for that. That's mm-hmm. the explanation behind it. Mm-hmm. But just linguistics, it's like saying they spoke to themselves and they decided it was good. Facts, the word though. Elohim is a plural. See, I don't know like a lot of uh, the details, but I do know like. It, it 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 is a day because I'm talking about Mother Universe and a higher power and God and I just feel like there has to be something watching over us and protecting us. I I do really feel protected. There's a couple times I I should have died. It was my fault and I take um real quick some advice from a music manager. There's two L words loss and lesson Mm -hmm. it's never a loss if you you know view it as a lesson and i feel like that is i'm being guided by a higher power do i know the exact definition no do i want to know the exact definition no because i feel like as soon as i put a definition on it i'm i put a limit on it and my experiences and my growth and my journey it's like sticking to that one thing Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and then as far as like the crystals go um, 
I have, I have had some crazy experiences with crystals, all positive. Um, I actually have a puppy who I named Onyx. Um, Onyx is one of my favorite crystals for protection. So um, he's wearing Onyx on it. Yeah, that's the first thing I noticed. Um, and then I don't know a lot about the crystals, but I do know that I've been in, I've been in the presence of different crystals, and some I can literally feel. Like the first time I held selenite, I had a friend. She said, "Put this in your pocket when you're at work," because I was getting bullied at work. Sure enough. The, it, it protected me for a while. I felt like I wasn't really, um, I wasn't overwhelmed by yeah. all the energy. You feel the same way you had before you had it. Yes. And then another crazy experience with crystals. I, I was at work one time and I had rose quartz crystal on my wrist and I went to, uh, like give cash to a customer and it broke. Yeah. And I asked like my friend who gave why? it to me, I was like, why? Yeah. And she said like it, it did what something it, was it did what it was supposed to do and like the energy was like very disruptive so like it basically like that's no more and i've had that happen to three different bracelets oh, um, not bracelets but stones and yeah stones and like it's just crazy like it's it, it is it is a real thing and i i do want to look more into it because there is um definitely like a higher power behind it and it's crazy because the other two bracelets that broke, uh, was actually so like in the last month, uh, was from somebody that like was like really bad for me, hurt me really bad, was like spreading lies about me. And like each time I put the bracelet on, like the first one, it slid off my wrist and I lost it that same night. And then there was another he they gave me another bracelet. I put it on and I was walking my dogs and it shattered on the floor. The same day I put it on, I was like, that's a sign for me. That's guidance from whatever is leading oh, yeah. us. You know, like I'm, I feel so protected just by that and like those experiences. So yeah, I always have selenite around and I feel like it really just kind of like equalizes everything. Yeah. Right. Well, I have three things to say, and I'm going to say them all love so I don't forget. Yes. One, I just remembered the first time a bracelet of mine broke. Two, you said putting a limit on it and what God is and can be. And then three, another stone I had break. So, oh, and why? Like, just about the idea behind them. And, like, I don't know all of them either. And it's, like, my mom, I was raised super, super Christian, like, brought up in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I, I've read the Bible my whole life. By the time I was 10... I was doing my own Bible study in the morning before school. Like wow. my grandma assigned me a part of the Bible to read mm -hmm. and I would read until I finished the chapter or finished the book and I would get another one. Wow. And, yeah. And so when she saw me, she was like, who are you? Like, I don't know what's going on with all that. And I didn't have an explanation. Mm -hmm. It's like the explanation was I had a bracelet at one point, which was the first one that ever broke and somebody just gave it to me. They had been selling them and I think they gave it to me. And I was like, work. And I wore it. And then I looked up what the stone was. It was tourmaline quartz. And I had never heard of it. I had heard of quartz. So I had never heard of tourmaline. Mm -hmm. And so I looked it up and I was like, cool, bet. Took the meaning into my head and that was that. And one day it broke. And it's just now that I realized that time period that it broke in it was around the time, like the same time frame as the event that made me realize I needed to reassess my life. And that's when I kind of quit drinking. And it's also the same turn point when I started learning how to engineer and wow. mix myself. You feel me? Wow. And then um, with just like why they break in the energy aspect of it, like we said, everything has a frequency. So it's like just at the bare minimum with it being a different substance than that. Right. It's clearly vibrating at a different rate. Frequency, frequency and resonance yeah. so yeah. what each one is actually doing and means you can talk to three different people and they might all three tell you something different. slightly different mm -hmm. and so it's like i am very lenient onto how deep i go into what this means and why you have it a lot of the ones you see me with personally is because i either like the stone it's relevant to somebody i know myself or it felt right mm -hmm. <laughs> that part it felt right that's huge with me. like how i choose which ones to give yeah it's usually based on which one feels right you feel me pretty and then um 
another time I had a piece break, similar situation. I was just in a chaotic situation. It was like my living situation wasn't conducive to my well-being mentally. Not that it was the worst or anything, but it wasn't a space for me Mm -hmm. to be at my highest. And there was a lot of just... It was chaotic. It was chaotic. Literally, it was chaotic. And I had just got the ring. It was a birthday present. And I put it on. And I put it on the wrong finger. It's literally my pinky. This pinky has a little nook in it because I broke it. <laughs> and so it fits comfortably. This one, it went a little farther. Uh, and I just went to take it off. It, the ring was this thick, oh, like wow. front wise, and then from the side, this thick. And so I'm, it's a ring, so I'm not treating it. You feel me? I'm still trying to just gently. But still. The whole bottom just. I was like, bro, what? I looked at the person I live with, and I was like, hmm, what? And I had heard, like, when they break, it's because of something. And then the artist who actually made it came back to California. I was like, yo, yeah, that ring that the person gave me from you. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I guess it did what it was supposed to. Yeah. I was like, damn, bro. It served its purpose. I don't have any more. Like, where am I going to get another solid piece of quartz like that? Mm -hmm. I was so sad, and I was like, bro, I got to get my ass the fuck up out. (laughs) And that's what's going on, bro. I got to get up out. Mm -hmm. And you did. No, for sure. And then the other thing that I wanted to say was um, just with you saying you don't want to put a limit on Mm -hmm. what God is and can be by putting the name God or universal power or whatever, because a lot of times those are denoted to be within a certain belief system or sect or if you say that then you're a part of this or if you do this you're a part if you get on your knees and you pray you must be you feel me Mm -hmm. right and it's like bro what i or if you meditate and you're not sitting when you meditate you're not meditating yeah which is so wrong meditation is a way of Mm -hmm. life Mm -hmm. and so the one thing i will say is in the bible it says i am that's what God said when he got asked his name. or And I'm just saying he because that's, you feel me? We, we get it. But that was the response. Yeah. I am that I am. Mm-hmm. So whatever you put after that is what you are making me because I'm at everything. This is the universal. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if we are made in the same reflection, in the same image, with the same energy running through us, I am as well yeah so it's like when we say i am a doctor you're limiting yourself when you say i am in anything you're limiting yourself Mm -hmm. because you can be what needs to be as long as you do the work to become the thing Mm -hmm. as soon as you stop saying or as soon as you start saying you're only one yeah as soon as you stop being able to be anything else yeah because no one's just one thing except existing like i am Beings. I am being. We're human beings. Yeah. I'm not just an artist. I like to paint. I like to cook. I like to go to the gym. I like to work. Yeah. No one's one thing. Exactly. So at least you understand what I was saying. Oh, no. 100%. I understand it all. This is what you said. And I was like, oh, I had to. But you said a lot of things that I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah." And I thought of that. That's crazy about the the bracelet and the ring. The ring, I had already heard it at that point. So I was more like, huh. But it had been like five, six years. So it was Mm -hmm. college when I got the bracelet. And then as I was gotten older and when I got my first, just like one of these necklaces, it was just because I wanted my first stone. And then I was like, let me get a- Dive into this. Bulk of stones. Oh. Maybe I'll get some necklaces. Yeah. And then it went from that to bracelets, to rings, to God's God's favorite jewels. God's favorite jewels, yeah. Yeah. And that just is to go with, like, you just keep stepping into it, kind of like with you in your music journey. You started playing the piano, and you got excited by being able to play for all those people. Yeah. And then you just somehow ended up being taught by somebody who was a great person to learn from. So crazy. And then you kept with it, and somebody realized how much you enjoyed it. So they gifted you with something to continue enjoying what you enjoyed and to pursue your passion. You feel me? And then you said you even got the software because Mm -hmm. somebody recognized what was already bubbling in you since a kid. And that's like beautiful how things can work as long as you do what feels right Mm -hmm. and you keep pursuing it. Always. 
Absolutely. Wow, what a beautiful discussion. <laughs> this is not every day for me. Like, this is amazing. Thank you for having me on this. We all get a discussion. Like, yeah, no, this is this is amazing. And like, I will tell you, same thing with the crystals. That MacBook that was given to me, it felt right. I still have it, and it's never broken. And it's real? it is a MacBook Air. I think it's a 2013. Yeah. And it still works. Oh, it's fire. I'm not using it. It can't run. <laughs> it can't, I can't produce on it very well. But I did for so oh, long yeah. and it still has never, it still has never like given up on me. Um, there's like some battery problem with it. But yeah. Besides but it still that, works? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me see. What's something you want people to know about you? Hmm. Um, I don't bite. <laughs> I'm actually like, I'm too nice. Um, my new favorite song is about to come out. I talk about that. I'm too nice, but I'm not dumb. Um, I am just here to express my emotions through music. And I want people to know that listening to my music is a safe place and it should uh, be able to help you figure out anything you might be going through, um, mental and emotional awareness. And I just need people to know that like, this is my purpose, but I'm not here to like cause any problems or signify hate. I feel like you just always move with love and I want to set like a proper example of that and like inspire people. And they should know, like, it's always better to move with love. Oh, 100%. It's a little bit about me. There's the one thing about when you move with love sometimes, it'll leave them even more confused. Especially if it's somebody who does have some capability to reflect. Yeah. Because in that reflection, they'll realize something that they don't have in them that you do. And it'll kill them. Yeah. I want people to know it's, it's, I exist to spread love into this universe and make people more aware that... That is the answer. No, for sure. Yeah. Love. Always. Yeah. Love and light. Love and light. <laughs> oh, I feel like this is a perfect place to run. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, even though, like, we could still talk about so much more. It's been super wholesome. I feel fulfilled. The sake was perfect. Sake. Is it? I'll be saying, look. Sake it's or sake? To, it's more so supposed to be sake, for sake. real. But uh, I have a song called Sake. It's but so good. in the song, I say dripping just like Saki. You feel me? Whatever works the best here. Right at all. Whatever. We still know what you're talking about. We're talking about this right here. This delicious drink that we are so grateful for being sponsored with by From Sake High. Brewed all the way in Kyoto, Japan. Like I said earlier, you can get it shipped right to your front door. We thank them for providing that. We thank God's favorite jewels for reminding us all that we're special. And we got to thank the lovely Olivia Rafe for coming through and dropping some gems. Peace.